Shadow Phoenix here, and today we're going to be doing another random ass anime review. And today we're going to be taking a look at Bastard. Yeah, this is one that I've known about for years just because the name of it is just so fucking random, but I never actually got around to watching it until recently. And it is considered as a dark fantasy action, but I would personally would like to throw comedy in there as well. So now let's talk about the show's story. So the two main characters in this one are Luce and Yoko. And Yoko happens to be the daughter of the great priest Gio. And Luce is a child where apparently this child form is not actually his original self. He is actually Dark Schneider who has been trapped inside a kid's body. And the only way he can be released is if he is kissed by a girl who happens to be a virgin. So these characters happen to belong to the kingdom of Metalicana and it's being attacked by the Four Lords of Havoc. And they happen to be consist of Abigail, Arsha's Nae, Gara, the Grandmaster Ninja, and finally, Kabidabu. Although there is another character that kinda works for them, and that happens to be Kal Su. So the only way to stop this attack is to bring forth Dark Schneider himself. And when he gets unleashed from his child form, he is not exactly what he might seem. For that, he is a sarcastic asshole that gives no shits. In some aspects, he kind of reminds me of Ryudo from Grandia 2, or even Yuri from Shadow Hearts. Either way, they're both pretty similar. So after some bantering between all the characters, Cappy Dabu ends up breaking into the castle, and he ends up getting killed like right off the bat. And after saving everyone in the kingdom from the attack, and what Dark Snyder's main goal here is just to take over the entire world and have every single woman bow down to him, Duke Nukem style. And after that, it usually follows various situations involving Yoko and Dark Schneider, and also a little bit of him in his child form. But he also does want to take out the other four Lords of Havoc, since he does know them from previous years since he is 400 years old. And that sums up what you need to know about the story. It's very simplistic stuff for fantasy standards. But before we move on, I have two things I have to mention. So firstly, I have to say that this one is pretty damn funny and is very much a parody of itself. So you get a lot of corny jokes and you also do get some breaking the fourth wall jokes. And you also do get some fan service stuff, which is fine because at least it's not trying to like show it off at like every five seconds like a lot of shit these days. And lastly, I have to mention is that this show has a lot of metal references, so if you're a metal fan like me, you'll definitely get some kicks out of it. I'll go over a couple examples, so Dirk Schneider is actually named after Udo Dirk Schneider from the band Accept, and Cal Su happens to be named after the lead singer of Bad Moon Rising, Cal Swan. And Abigail is named after the King Diamond album, well, Abigail. And speaking of King Diamond, but you also do get another character that is named Count Diamond, which is pretty obvious. But I did find it to be pretty cool that they did give him face paint that does look very similar to King Diamond's. And two more I'll mention, and this one being a more minor character, is Kai Harn. And she is named after Kai Hansen, who was the singer of Halloween, which is fucking awesome. And finally, High Priest Gio Soto happens to be named after Jeff Soto, who is most famously known for singing in Yui Malstein. But I'd also like to throw in there that he also was the singer of the band Axel Rudipel, which is another favorite of mine. And there's a bunch of others too, but I won't get into there. But yeah, if you do watch this one and you do read through all the names, you'll definitely recognize a lot of them, which is always amusing. So if you really think about it, this show is kind of like a mix between Records of Lotus War and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. But it's really the music references and the comedic elements that really reminds me of the two. So now, let's get into the other things, like the animation. And for the most part, the animation is fairly good. So I like all the character designs in this one, I think they all look really cool, and like I said, they do kind of remind me a little bit of something from uh, Records of Lotus War. The action scenes are good and are violent, but nothing too over the top. And you really got some really cool set pieces here, but if there's anything I would complain about would have to be that there is a couple background things I have noticed that were kind of like errors. Nothing huge, they are very minor, but they were just little things that I did notice that are worth pointing out. But overall, I do think the animation in this one is pretty good. I don't know if I call it the best 90s animation I've ever seen, but I think it looks good for what it is. And as for the show's music, well, the music in this one is good, and it does fit the setting really well. You get a lot of, uh, you know, dark fantasy sounding songs. 
But one thing that I was a little bit disappointed in is that because everything in this show is like heavy metal related, there's really not a lot of metal tracks in this one. Now obviously, I don't expect them to put like King Diamond songs in here because that's just a lot of money for licensing. But I was at the very least expecting some like heavy metal riffs that you would hear throughout fight scenes. But sadly, you don't get any of that, so that's kind of a missed opportunity, but I don't think it's a real flaw, really. Because the main music that you do hear throughout this one is still good for what it is. I was just kind of hoping to have some sort of metal-related stuff because, you know, all like the references and shit. But either way, it's still good. So now, as for the voice acting here, well, the voice acting seems to get a very mixed reaction where you get some people that really like it, and then you get some people that say it's like fucking awful. But before I say my thoughts on it, let's take a look at the cast. So you got Richard Epcard, Mary Elizabeth McLean, Darren Norris, Kevin Seymour, Steve Blum, Richard Consino, Kirk Thornton, Brianna Siddle, Bridget Hoffman, Wendy Lee, Peter Spellows, Simon Prescott, and finally, Barry Stingler, just to name a few. Now that is a very solid cast if you ask me, and well, as for how it turned out, I actually like it. And a part of the reason why I like it really has to do with the fact that the show is pretty damn corny, and the voice acting really well fits that. But of course it's not perfect for that, I do find that a lot of the more minor roles within this one are pretty crappy. I mean, they're not the worst roles ever, but they definitely are not nearly as good as the rest of them. But for the main characters, or the reoccurring roles, I do think they do fit this one really well for what it's trying to be. Also, even if you're just gonna watch this one in Japanese, it's still just as hammy. So, clearly, if you don't like any, like, campy, ridiculous shit, then this anime is just not your cup of tea. So now, as for my overall thoughts on BASTARD, is that I actually like this one. I think it's actually a lot of fun. So as I said, the setting is really cool. I like all the characters. They're very good fun and also have some uh, really cool moments. And of course, some ridiculous moments. And of course, I like the comedy within this one. I think it's just a hell of a lot of fun. And that's something I have to stress, is that this show just really doesn't take itself seriously, and it really celebrates it. And it also celebrates the fact that it's very cliché. Because I've been hearing a lot of people saying that this show is, like, so bad that it's good. But to me, I really don't see anything that's so bad about it. And usually the reason why people say it's so bad it's good is because the fact that it's so cliche and that it's so campy and ridiculous, but like I said though, that's kind of the point of the show. And besides, just because something is campy and ridiculous doesn't necessarily mean bad. Of course, there is a right balance for it, but this show just really doesn't take itself seriously and makes fun of the fact that it, that it is so cliche. Because this show does have a lot of moments that you can easily see coming from a mile away, but the writing of like the situation and the characters is just so damn funny that it doesn't even matter. And besides, if this show is kept exactly the same way as it was, with the dark fantasy and such, but taken out all like the ridiculous shit and was made like drop dead seriously, the show would be boring as fuck. So overall, if you do want to watch Bastard, you gotta know exactly what you're getting into that it is more of a comedy. And if you want something that was short, sweet, and to the point, and also is a lot of fun, then I can definitely recommend it, considering that there's only like six episodes. But I can understand not liking it for the fact that some of the jokes might be a little bit too ridiculous for some, but if you don't mind that sort of thing, I think you'll definitely enjoy it. But as much fun as I did have watching this one, I don't think I'd put it up there as some of my all-time favorites. Like, the show is all good fun, but one problem I did have was that the ending was, uh, pretty weak sauce. I mean, it wasn't, like, the worst ending ever. It was just one of those situations where you can tell that there was originally going to be more episodes, but they just never got made. So, yeah, that's one thing I will say. If you do want to watch this one, that is something to expect. But all the episodes and all the scenes getting up to that part, then yeah, it definitely is for a fun ride. So y'all better start watching Bastard, you bastards. Just kidding, of course, but in all seriousness, though, I did really like this one for what it was. 